welcome to another meal prep. Now this week, pretty simple. Only took me a couple hours. Start to finish, cleaned up. As soon as David eats his breakfast, dishwasher will be running and I'll be done for the day. Um, so it's pretty, pretty straightforward food. Breakfast is a sausage breakfast skillet, I guess you would say. Um, and I'm gonna heat it up during the week and put a runny egg or two depends on how I feel that morning on top and then there's breakfast lunch is a chicken pecan salad and I will either just eat it as is I think I have maybe two um, wraps left I also have some of that plant protein bread I could put it on that you know if I wanted to eat it with toast on the side how, however I decide to do that I have a little bit of celery left and I could scoop it but there's plenty of celery in it <laughs> And y'all know that is enough. And then for my snack is the snickerdoodle truffles. Now, I went to um, get the recipe because when I made them last time and I didn't film it, you can go back and um, watch it. I I'll try to link it. When I went to the website, because that's all I put on my website, was a link to her recipe instead of typing it out. It wouldn't pull up on my phone. The page pulled up, but the recipe part did not. I'm like, well, maybe it's my phone. So I went to the computer and it wouldn't pull up on there. It says page not found. So I couldn't find the recipe. So I had to go back and rewatch my own video <laughs> to figure out how to make them. So I will go ahead and type that recipe out. Um, it is a keto recipe. If you want to make it um, lower in points or lower in calories, I guess you could probably use light butter instead of real butter. Um, something to play around with if, if you so desired but that is it for this week and so let's just turn around and get started cooking to make our sausage breakfast skillet we're going to heat our pan and use one pound of bulk breakfast sausage now this roll is like 12 ounces but my favorite niece's is a pound so that's why I'm leaving the recipe written as a pound so I really should have more in this recipe than I do but it's okay. Then we want to break it apart with our spatula. And once the fat starts releasing, I use my little meat chopper because you want to get into a, a small crumble. So stir that around and now we're going to add our onions. Use about a half a, a small to medium onion. I had this in the refrigerator and my white onion and my red onion both were frozen and since I couldn't use them raw I figured I would just put all of it in my sausage here so it cooked up just fine so that's what you want to do you just want to cook this until the sausage is completely done and the onions will get done at the same time now we want to drain this I have a bowl lined with paper towel because we want to get out as much grease as possible so just scoop your sausage into the bowl if you have another way you like to drain it then you can um, go ahead and do that now i want to show you my trick for what's left in the pan i keep this it's a crisco it, nut cans anything that's like got metal inside and i put old grease on top and i keep it in the freezer for anything you know i save my bacon grease but other meat juices and meat fats that you don't want to save and you definitely don't want to put them down the sink just put them in this little container and keep it in the fridge and that way it's not under your counter getting all moldy and nasty and smelly <laughs> now put the, the pan back on the heat and dump your sausage back in the pan and you're going to see well i went ahead and patted down the top of it first but you're going to see how much grease came out onto this paper towel and there's no carbs in that grease but that doesn't mean you need to eat it so drain your sausage <laughs> now what we're going to do is sprinkle it with three quarters cups of shredded cheddar cheese whatever kind of cheese you want to use put the lid on it and just let it sit on the heat until the cheese is melted now it only took mine one if two minutes at that from the heat of the sausage to melt that cheese and now it's just a matter of separating it out into four servings moving on to our chicken pecan salad i'm cooking my chicken in the instant pot now 
you can put any kind of liquid in there you want. This is how I do it sometimes when I'm just feeling lazy. I sprinkle some chicken bouillon on it and pour my half a cup of water. Since this is a three quart, it only takes a half a cup. And cook it for, since they're frozen, I cook them for 14 minutes. Let them sit for 10 minutes. Now, I'm letting the chicken cool while we do the veggies. And you can see, I know that you can freeze the celery, but we just don't eat enough things that have celery in it, so it still goes to the waste. That's why I just go ahead and buy these little snack sizes. And I cut the little ends off because they're nine times out of ten brown. And then all you want to do is slice or dice your celery however fine that you like it. And I use the equivalent. I'm thinking about four small ribs. Next is about a half of a small red onion and dice it as big or fine as you want. Then the next thing we're going to do is a half a cup of pecans. You can chop it however you want. I make a mess when I use a knife. <laughs> they fly everywhere. So I'm using my Pampered Chef chopper. And I think I kind of got them too small, but I went with it because I did it, and I wasn't going to waste the pecans. So you, you chop them to whatever size that you want. Now, when I start adding these in, it kind of looked like too much pecans. So I just started with half of that. And th this, again, is something you can adjust um, to your taste for your points, for calories, or just texture, whatever you like. Now we're going to dice our chicken. And of course, you know, I try to rake off all the <laughs> all the icky parts. <laughs> See, I don't mind touching the chicken when it's cooked, so we're good to go there. Now I traded out my knife because that one just wasn't quite cutting it. I got my little tomato knife out there. I love my little rotta tomato knife. And I'm gonna show you about the size you want to dice it in. It'll it'll break apart a little bit more when you stir it, but this is about the size you want it. Little bite sized pieces, and we want three cups. Now it turned out that three cups was three of the chicken breasts. The other one I saved and had for breakfast. So we're just going to mix all that in together and try to get everything combined before we add in the mayonnaise. Whoops, about to forget it. Salt your chicken. I You can salt it afterwards, but I figured I would salt the chicken before I stirred it in. Get it combined really well. Now, I started with two-thirds cup of mayonnaise, and you know Duke's is my favorite. You can use whatever kind you like. These these recipes are all left up to interpretation. So that, that's what's so good about them. So mix that in until it's well blended. Now, I took a little taste, and I couldn't really tell that I had pecan in that bite. So I went ahead and added the whole half a cup of pecans and mixed that back in. Then I got to looking at it, and it looked a little dry. So I added probably about another third cup of mayonnaise. And here again, like I said, you can use as much or as little as you like. And stir it around. That's all there is to the salad. Now here's what we have for the week. My sausage breakfast skillet. And I'm going to cook it, or heat it up, and, and put... One or two fried eggs, so the yolk will run down on it. I think that'll be really, really good. And then here's the final chicken pecan salad. And then for snack, our snickerdoodle truffles. So I hope you set yourself up for a good week. I hope you're having a great weekend, and I will see you on my next video.